Okay, guys, uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives. Uh, still on our power machines and five revisions. Uh, I just want us to concentrate and focus uh, on this question, uh, which is on the calorimeters uh, from the question paper of November 2019. So that was 20 marks on everything. Uh, actually, this question, it is important to have it as it gives us uh, a lot of information that we need to understand in our syllabus uh, when dealing with the uh, calorimeters. We are given a combined separating and throttling uh, calorimeter is used to determine dryness fraction. As we know that uh, calorimeters, they are, they are there to determine the dryness fraction. So we've got the barometer reading at 775 uh, millimeter high and the manometer rating at 652. Then the mass of the condensed steam, the mass of water, the steam after throttling and the, and so forth. The specific capacity of the superheated steam, this is what we have. All right, so let us just try to take our information here. As you can see, we've got uh, the barometer and the manometer ratings. Okay, that's... Uh, Okay, let us just give our barometer reading, uh, which is 775. Then also we are given uh, the manometer reading, uh, which is uh, at uh, 652 uh, millimeters high. So that's the readings. Then the mass of the condensed steam, which is uh, 1,5 kilograms. All right, so we've got the mass of steam and the mass of, all right, this is the mass of condensed steam, all right, uh, which is just the steam in this case, all right. So that is 1,5 uh, kilogram. So that's our condensed steam. All right, let's see. Then the mass of water, uh, we've got the mass of water here, 0 0,15 uh, kilograms. Okay, let's see the other part with the steam after throttling. So you're given the steam after throttling is at. Uh, take note, this is a combined separating and throttling. So we are given the pressure after, after throttling in this case. And uh, we do not know what's going to happen. Is it going to remain as wet steam? Is it going to be dry or is it going to be superheated? So we're going to know that uh, about here when we are given the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam, which is 2,1 kilojoules per kg degree Celsius. All right, so this one is uh, properly written, it must be per kilojoule K, uh, kg degree Celsius. So if we are to check, we are talking about the superheated steam. So meaning to say uh, at this part here where we are given the pressure of 120 after throttling, and this, temp this temperature that we are seeing is the temperature of the superheated steam. So we have the pressure after throttling, uh, which is, let us just say, P2 after throttling. All right, let us just say, all right, after, okay, sorry for that, after uh, throttling in this case, we're gonna have P2, which is the pressure affecting the superheated steam of 120 kilopascal. So this 120 kilopascal is gonna affect the superheated steam. So we've got TSS, which is for the superheated steam at 110 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature of the superheated steam in this case. And also we're given the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam, which is 2,1 uh, uh, kilojoules per kg degree Celsius. So that's how it's supposed to be written because we are given our temperature in degrees Celsius, okay? So the question is, um, let us see. All right, the first part of our question was uh, 3.1, which is to calculate the dryness fraction in this case of the steam in the separating calorimeter. All right, in the separating calorimeter, it follows that the dryness fraction uh, is given by the formula. All right, so let us just list down 3.1. So the dryness fraction is given uh, by the formula, the mass of the condensate in this case uh, over the mass of the condensate plus the mass of water. So it's actually the mass of dry steam, which is the condensate, the mass of the dry steam over the mass of the dry steam plus the mass of water. So we're just gonna use that uh, to find the temperature before 
uh, throttling uh, before uh, in this case, meaning to say in, in the separating calorimeter before, that is in the separating calorimeter, uh, we're gonna have uh, our values, we've got everything here. So the mass of the condensate is uh, 1,5. So that's 1,5 over uh, 1,5 plus the mass of water, which is 0 0.15. All right, so that's it. We are going to obtain a 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and so on. So that will be a 0 0.9 there. Okay, so that's how we calculate uh, in the separating calorimeter. Uh, then 3.2, the dryness fraction of steam in the throttling calorimeter now, in the throttling calorimeter, meaning to say we are that is the condition that we uh, we have to consider the enthalpy before and after. Uh, I talked about this type of a question. I think it was April 2023. Just check that type of a question. We have to consider before and after. That is in the throttling calorimeter. So before we are given this as the wet steam and after, we, when it is condensed, now we are given this as the superheated because you have got a temperature of the superheated and the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam. So here we are going to be considering the superheated steam after, after, but before at these conditions, before throttling in this case, we are to consider uh, the wet steam. You'll be working with a wet steam before throttling. So meaning to say, we are going to say these two, they are equal, all right? We are going to equate these two, that is uh, 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 3.2, all right? So we're gonna consider uh, the enthalpy before throttling, uh, that is uh, before uh, throttling in this case, will be equal to the H after throttling, all right? After throttling in this case. Uh, so meaning to say, before, what are we considering? H wet, that is before, we're gonna consider H wet, and after is the superheated steam. All right, uh, I talked about this. Uh, H wet, guys, with the formula does not change, all right? H wet is equal to HF plus X HFG for the evaporation. This is for water for evaporation, which is equal to H uh, soup, which is the specific enthalpy in this case. So it's given by HG plus Cp into the temperature for the superheated minus the saturation temperature. Uh, so this here, what we need is to calculate the dryness fraction. So we need to find X, remember. So we are going to use HF and HFG at the temperature, at the pressure before throttling in this case, at before throttling, that's where we have H wet, meaning to say we are going to use P uh, which is the absolute pressure. We are going to work with the absolute uh, pressure that is before. So this is P1. Let's just say P1 before throttling, okay? going to talk about uh, the absolute pressure in this case. So this is the first condition, and this is the second condition after throttling. So we're going to talk about P2. Here we're going to talk about P1. So P1, is equal to the absolute pressure in this case, that's equal to P, the absolute pressure that we are going to obtain from the barometer and manometer reading. All right, so we can just have that uh, here, we can calculate it later on. Then here, we're gonna consider Hg, uh, which is the dry steam, and uh, the saturation temperature in this case at P2 after throttling in this case, that is uh, after, uh, throttling and at P2 after throttling we are given the pressure after which is 120 so there we have got uh, the pressure already we are given that's the pressure at uh, 120 kilopascal we're going to find Hg and Ts then at P1 which is the absolute pressure we are going to find Hf and Hfg so we are going to need the absolute pressure from where from this part that we are given the manometer uh, and the barometer reading. So remember that the absolute pressure uh, when dealing with a calorimeter, we are going to have our formula as uh, pressure 
is equal to the barometer reading plus the manometer reading you add. When dealing with a condenser, you subtract these two. All right. So on the on a calorimeter, you add, all right, times 101.325 over 760. All right. So that's it. We're gonna substitute our values, the barometer reading, which is uh, 775 plus the manometer reading, uh, 652 uh, times 101.325 over 760. So on the formula sheet, this formula is given as P is equal to BM plus or minus M. And that's why I'm saying you're supposed to know what to do, which, co which consideration are you going to use. A calorimeter, you add, then for a condenser, you subtract. So this negative is for a condenser. The positive is for a calorimeter. Okay, that's the condition there, done. So uh, here, uh, let's just stop. We're not gonna need this X later on because I'm gonna erase this part, but I hope you know this value that you obtained uh, for 3.1 because I'm gonna erase this part, guys. Sorry for that, so that we can properly see on that was 0, 0,09. Okay, let me just write it here, 0, uh, 0, 0,909 because we might need this value, all right. So here we are going to obtain the pressure of, if we simplify, that was gonna be 190,251, something like that, uh, kilopascal. But as you can see, we need this pressure in order to obtain uh, the enthalpies, in this case, HF and HFG. So meaning to say, we're gonna round off to the nearest one number because we do not have decimals from our steam table. So this is going to uh, approximate to 190 kilopascal. So we are going to use this for the steam table calculations. As long as we are talking about steam table calculations, we are going to be using this value. But for any other thing, we can just use this one, the one that we had before. So that is where we are going to obtain uh, the enthalpy, in the, I mean, the, the dryness fraction in this case. All right, so that is it. Uh, that's how we calculate the dryness fraction in the what throttling a uh, calorimeter. We need the one of before and the one after. That is H wet is equal to. So let us find. Uh, so as we can see here, we obtained our pressure as 190 kilopascal. So we are going to find HF and HFG at these values from our steam table. So let's go to our steam table here at 190 kilopascal. We need HF and HFG there. All right, so this is 190 kilopascal. So at 190 kilo at 190 kilopascal here, we're gonna need HF. The corresponding value of HF is 498. Uh, then HFG, the corresponding value of HFG is 2206. So these are the values that we are going to need uh, for what? For HF. All right, gonna need this for HF and for HFG. So we said uh, at 190 here, HF is equal to uh, 498. Remember it was 498 kilojoule per kg and HFG was 2206 uh, kilojoule per kg. All right, let's just substitute it, guys. We saw the values, I think uh, we all understand. I showed you the values. So let's just substitute HF uh, 498 plus HFG times, so it's X times HFG, so it's gonna be 2206 times X, or X times 2206, it's one and the same thing. All right, so this is equal to HG for the superheated steam now. So we're now considering for the superheated steam at which pressure? At 120. So we are going to consider HG and TS there at 120. So at 120, uh, that's at 120 here, all right, that's 120, we need up to HG. All right, so HG here at 120 is 2683, then TS, which is the saturation temperature is 104,8, 104,8. So 2683 for HG, 2683, so this is gonna be, uh, 2683, that is our HG at 120 after throttling, all right? 
uh, plus the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam. Remember, we've got the specific heat capacity of the superheated steam, 2,1. So that's going to be 2,1 into the uh, temperature for the superheated steam, which is at uh, this pressure, it's 110, uh, corresponding to that pressure. That's 110 mm -hmm. minus the saturation temperature, which is at a pressure of 120, where we took Hg. Uh, remember, at 120, here we said our saturation temperature is uh, 104,8. So that is going to be 104,8 in this case. All right. So it's 104, uh, comma eight like this. Okay. So that's it. We are going to simplify uh, everything on the right hand side. So we're going to have 498 plus 2206x is equal to, if we simplify everything on the right hand side, we are going to obtain 2693,92. Then we can transpose 498 to this side so that it can be a negative. So if we subtract 498, uh, we are going to be left with 2206x, which is equal to 2195. 92. So that's it. We can find the value of x there if we divide uh, by 2206. So if we divide by this 2206 both sides, we are going to remain with the value of x. So that's our x. In this case, was going to be 0 0.9954, which is 995. All right, remember x is dryness fraction. We do not have the unit in this case. So this is the dryness fraction in the separating uh, uh, is calorimeter in this case, right? We are talking in the throttling calorimeter, so not in the separating, but in the throttling, in the throttling, all right? So that is in the throttling uh, calorimeter, all right? In the throttling calorimeter. Uh, then, all right, so that's it. Uh, if we consider this, we talked about, um, uh, they can just ask you a single question like this, but this one, they need you to use all the information. Anyways, uh, now they want us 3.3 .3 to calculate the dryness fraction of the steam in the main, in the steam mains, in the steam mains. All right, so if you are talking about the mains, it's uh, going to be the product of the separating to the uh, throttling calorimeter. So we're going to multiply the two. Uh, that's here. We can just consider, let us just have it here uh, quickly, because I don't need to, I don't think we're gonna need these values here. So like I said, uh, it's going to be the product of these two. So that's 3.3 X in the mains. All right, so this is in the mains, it's going to be X in the separating so let us just say it's uh, x1 so that we can multiply it properly, x1 and x2 for the uh, throttling calorimeter in this case, uh, whereby here we calculated and got 0, 0,995, all right, 0, 0,995. So here we're gonna use 0, 0,995, all right? So it's the product of the two in the separating and that one of what? Of the throttling calorimeter. So that's the idea. So you're gonna have 0 0.909 times, uh, so the formula here could you have just written as X is equal to X1 times X2, okay? So that's it. Uh, you're gonna have 0 0.995, okay? So that's our X. So if we multiply here, you're gonna have uh, 0 0.9, uh, 0, 4, 4, 5, 5, which is going to be three decimal place 904. So that was the X that you're going to have in the mains. All right. So this is in the, in the mains. All right. Then uh, 3.4, the volume of steam in the mains, take note in the mains for three kilogram um, steam by using the answer to question 3.3. .3. Okay. So in the mains, what's going to happen is that we, we are going to be working with the absolute pressure. In the mains, we're going to use the absolute pressure. All right. So at absolute pressure, we are going to see that uh, in order for us to obtain the volume of steam, 
uh, in actual sense, this is what you're supposed to have. Uh, the volume of steam from X being equal to the volume of steam over VT like this. We're gonna calculate the volume of steam. We cross multiply, that will be the volume of steam is X times VG, which is the volume of dry steam. So this is the dry steam. So this X is going to be in the mains, because they're saying in the mains. So we are going to use the dryness fraction of the mains, not of the uh, throttling, not of the separating. We are going to use X of the mains because they are considering from the mains. So they need this uh, for a three kilogram of steam. So we are going to multiply by the kg, but take note, uh, if we calculate from this, we're gonna have our volume, which is cubic meters per kg. So the moment we multiply by kgs, our volume is going to remain in cubic meters, all right? So that's it. Uh, so V, we're gonna multiply here. Uh, to calculate this, we're gonna multiply by the mass. So it's X times VG, so that we obtain our answer in cubic meters since we are given a certain mass. All right, so that's it. We are given the mass in this case of three kilogram times the dryness fraction in the mains, because we are referring to the mains in this case. In the mains, the dryness fraction is uh, 0 0.904 times VG, that is at the absolute pressure. Remember our absolute pressure is the one that we calculated here and approximated to 190. So at 190, what is our VG at that value? So we are going to take this at absolute pressure, VG in this case, all right, from our steam table uh, at 190. Remember we talked about 190 before. Yeah, so we need VG there. That is our VG here at 190 is gonna be uh, 0 0,9290. So it's gonna be 0 0,929, right? These are cubic meters per, 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 per kilogram, all right? So you're gonna have uh, this as um, 0 0,929, and that's a zero there, which you cannot, uh, you can just ignore that one, all right? So this is going to give us the volume in this case of uh, the, the the volume of steam in the mains. All right, so if you multiply this, it was gonna be two comma five one nine four four eight and so on. So it's going to be two comma five one nine uh, cubic meters. So like I said, the moment you multiply by the mass in this case, it is uh, cubic meters per kilogram and you multiply by a kilogram. So kilogram, kilogram cancels, you remain with the cubic meter. That's the concept of the conversion of units. All right, so that was it, question 3.4, to obtain 20 marks. That was the requirement for you to have uh, these 20 marks. So as you can see, uh, calorimeters is a direct application, direct application where you just need to know your formulas, uh, which formula is best, at which point, and how to connect your formulas uh, in calculating of the dryness fractions, because mostly, uh, in fact, we shall be talking about the dryness fraction as long we are talking about a calorimeter. So we shall see more questions to come uh, from Mesoan African motives.